Hey, what is up fit fam? And today we're going to talk about body recomposition. How you can build muscle and lose fat at the same time. So can you actually build muscle and lose fat at the same time? Well, yes you can. And it happens all around you. Most people just don't know it. But there is something to take into consideration before we talk. We talk about this body recomposition, about this losing, losing fat and gaining muscle at the same time. And that is that you are more prone or it is more likely to happen to a certain group of people, which are beginner trainers. By beginner trainers, I mean uh, the people that started going to the gym uh, regularly. Uh, at about one year uh, and they are in their first year of actually training properly and eating properly uh, also detrained uh, lifters uh, people that used to go regularly to the gym but because of injury or something else stopped going for a couple of months and also uh, enhanced lifters lifters that use steroids are very prone to actually lose fat and build muscle at the same time and uh, with a little bit of uh, doubt, uh, some intermediate lifters that uh, actually can achieve body recomposition, but I would say it would be more of a, of a lean, uh, not a lean bulk, it would be more of a uh, cut, but slow cut. Yeah, exactly. And now, now that you know that it is actually possible to build muscle and lose fat at the same time and what it is called body recomposition let's talk about how you can achieve it well first of all because it is body recomposition and you want to lose fat you need to achieve a caloric deficit but there is a caveat in here it's not any caloric deficit it's a slight caloric deficit and why do i emphasize the slight because you need to understand it is true that if you have a bigger caloric deficit, you will lose uh, fat way faster, way faster, of course. But it, uh, if you go on too much of a caloric deficit, you will also lose muscle. And on a body recomposition, you want to lose fat and gain muscle, not lose fat and muscle. Okay, so that's why I say slight caloric deficit. Because if you go on a slight caloric deficit, it won't actually break down the muscle. And what do I mean by a slight caloric deficit? What is considered a slight caloric deficit? Well, uh, I researched this a bit and uh, in the internet you will probably find the sources stating different things. But what I came, uh, I came up with is actually uh, trying to achieve a 0.7% of body fat loss per week so imagining you are a 80 kilograms uh, heavy person you will uh, want to achieve a six, uh, 600 grams loss of weight during the whole week now something to actually consider especially if you are a beginner if you are a beginner you will probably not see the results as much in the scale as you will in the in the mirror and why is that? Because at the same time that you are losing fat, you are building muscle. And let's imagine you lose 60 grams, 600 grams of, of fat, and you gain some muscle that actually amounts to six, uh, 600 grams also. Your weight will be the same, but you will have less fat and more muscle, which is what you want. So don't despair if you don't see the numbers in the scale. It's uh, it, What you really need to focus on is if you're making visual progress. That's it. Second thing that you need to uh, consider if you want to actually achieve the body recomposition. And it is to intake sufficient protein. What do I mean by this? Uh, during the day you need to eat enough protein to actually, uh, to actually sustain this process. And uh, eating protein is uh, generally important for building muscle. But it is even more important if you are trying to achieve a body recomposition. Before, I talked about a range of 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of total body weight. But that was when we were, we were talking about maintaining 
uh, calories, a caloric maintenance or a caloric surplus even, where you don't need to be as strict with protein. But now that we are trying to achieve a caloric deficit, even if it is a slight caloric deficit, you need to really up, uh, up that protein intake because it is crucial to maintain a positive nitrogen balance while you are on a caloric deficit. And what is this positive nitrogen balance? Well, like the, like the name says, it's having more nitrogen than you excrete. And uh, it is important to have more nitrogen than you, than you excrete for building muscle because nitrogen is a component of amino acids. And amino acids are the building blocks of protein. And you know the rest, of course. Protein is inducive with muscle hypertrophy and muscle growth. So you can see that actually maintaining a positive nitrogen balance is key in order to build muscle while you are actually cutting down the fats and the, and the calories that are flowing in your body. And actually having a negative nitrogen balance can pull you the other way around. So how, where can you get this nitrogen? Where, where not in the stores, not in the bottles, nitrogen, no of course not. You can get them from food, you can get them from dairy, you can get them from meats, eggs, legumes, you can get them from nuts, probably mo some of the food or most of the food you're actually already eating. So you don't need to worry about that. What you need to worry is about upping that uh, intake of protein to around the level, uh, I would say from what I researched personally, uh, of 2.4 grams of protein per kilogram of total body weight or more. And I say or more because uh, all people are different. And you might need more calorie, uh, my, uh, more protein than I do to maintain and build muscle, okay? And having more protein doesn't do anything harmful for you. And on the contrary, it can be very helpful for you in order for you to maintain your uh, society and making you full during the day. So you can experiment with this. You can go 2.4 grams. You can see if it is enough for you while you are in body recomposition or not. If it isn't enough, you up it. If it is enough, there's no need to up it. It's up to you. And the third thing you need to consider when we're talking about body recomposition is actually staying with progressive overload and progressively overloading during all of uh, this, all of maintaining your uh, slight caloric deficit mm -hmm. and intaking proper protein. Like, uh, levels into taking proper protein, okay, quantity, and um, by this I mean that you need to constantly up the levels of stimulus and stress you are putting your muscles through during the whole process. Meaning that in the gym you can uh, increase your weight, you can uh, do more reps in the same uh, of an exercise, you can do more sets, you can increase the frequency and work um, and work out more times. You can, uh, you can overloading by increasing the range of motion of an exercise or by uh, taking the, some of the time that you are resting and making the resting time shorter on a said exercise. All of these are valid ways to progressively overload. But you need to make sure you are doing it. You need to make sure you are having an intense and uh, stressful to your body, to your muscles, um, workout, uh, resistance training, during all of this, because you want to uh, you want to make sure that you are actually synthesizing muscle and building that muscle, because the body recomposition is not only the body fat loss but also the gain on body uh, on muscle mass. So uh, uh, yeah, in order uh, to actually build this muscle while you are losing fat, you need to progressively overload. I, I think I'm I think I'm missing something I wanted to say right in here, but I just cannot figure what it was. Anyway, but yeah, it is basically progressively overload. Recapping, if you want to achieve a successful body recomposition, what do you need to do? You need to maintain a slight caloric deficit. Then you need to intake proper levels of protein and quantity of protein. And then you need to progressively overload, to make sure you are getting stronger and stronger as the days go by in order to actually build muscle. Oh yeah, I, I remembered what I wanted to say, yeah. It doesn't matter how good the fuel is, 
or how, how awesome your slight mm -hmm. uh, caloric mm -hmm. deficit is and how much grams of protein you are actually intaking during the day if you don't actually put in the work and put in the stimulus and do the hard resistance training that is needed to build muscle. If you only maintain a caloric deficit and you eat uh, the adequate levels of protein, you'll only achieve fat loss at best. Doesn't matter what you do, you cannot build muscle if you don't actually put in the work and go to the gym or the calisthenics or put the, uh, or put the stimulus and the stress in the muscle itself. Minor uh, caveats before I let you guys go. Uh, you need to take into consideration that this body recomposition won't be as noticeable uh, uh, if you are close or very close to your genetic potential of muscle building. Or if you are already very lean, you know, it won't be as noticeable or it might not even happen if you are uh, way, uh, way too advanced for this to actually happen. If you actually have optimized your training and your eating and you have been doing it for years, it will be difficult to achieve a body recomposition. But for everyone else, you probably have a shot at going through that process and it will be very, very beneficial to you. Also, another group of people that won't actually benefit much from a body recomposition would be uh, the hard gainers, the newbies that are starting with uh, already low level of, bo of body fat. And I would say for them it would be best to go through a lean bulk process. But yeah guys, this, this was it. I will probably uh, leave a couple videos, one in year and one in year. I would guess I'm pointing ahead right now, I'm not that good and coordinated throughout time and space. But I hope you guys enjoyed, if you did enjoy, leave a like, a comment, uh, I love progressive transformation, I, I just keep getting awkward, awkward, okay yeah, comment down below and uh, hit the subscribe button, much love to you guys and peace.